Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DCS. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me for this week's DCS World video. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, Marshall, why aren't you in VR? Well, guys, uh, I made a channel update about this uh, about a month ago, explaining the problems with recording DCS World in VR. Now, those problems uh, still persist. They still remain. And as long as those uh, problems are still there, I'm not going to go ahead and record in, in VR. I'm just going to record uh, DCS World while playing in Track IR. So here we are. So let's get on with today's video, ladies and gentlemen. So today's video is going to be about Soviet air-to-ground guided munitions. So Soviet slash Russian air-to-ground guided weaponry. Now, just to put things in perspective, we're going to stay with fixed jet uh, weapons. So nothing fired from helicopters or drones. And we're going to stick with the uh, weaponry that is available here in DCS World. So, as we know, the U.S. has some pretty, pretty precise, pretty um, standoffish. Those are two key words: precise and standoffish weapons. And they've demonstrated the U.S. Air Force has demonstrated uh, the use of those weapons in in combat. So the U.S. has been involved in a couple of wars in the past 30 years. So just to name a few: um, Desert Storm. So that's 1991. Uh, Desert Storm 2.0, that's Iraq, 2003, Afghanistan, of course, the, the war on terror in, in Syria and, of course, in Iraq. And the U.S. Uh, has some, as I said, some pretty spectacular, pretty high-precision, standoffish air-to-ground weapons. So, in comparison, so their, the main competitor to the U.S. in the Cold War was the USSR. So, what did the USSR have and what does Russia, by succession, have now? So the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. So what do the Russians have? What do they have uh, to, to match up against the US? Now, uh, the Russians have also been involved in some wars in the you know, past 30 years. So just to name a few, they've, they've been involved in the war in Chechnya. Uh, they, they were involved in the war in 2008 against Georgia. And of course, their most recent and current involvement in the Syrian civil war. Now, if you look at Russian airstrike footages from from Syria, most of their their bombs that they drop are just dumb bombs, so they're completely unguided. And if you look at the footages closely, you see that the Russian bombs miss. They pretty much miss every single time. They're dumb bombs, although they're dropped from pretty modernized uh, aircraft, such as the Su-25. SM, uh, the SU-24, and the SU-34. So uh, those air, those types of aircraft have like uh, ballistic computers, so similar to what the F-16 and the F-18 has. So you can drop a unguided weapon pretty close to the target, even though it's unguided. But still, you can see they're not they're not um, guided weapons. They're not uh, as precise as the U.S. So the question is, why doesn't Russia? have the accurate weaponry that the US has for air to ground. So this is what we're going to try and pick at in this video. Now before we move on, I'm going to go ahead and quiz you guys. So that's what I like to do with my uh, viewers. So what is the difference between accuracy and precision? So go ahead and write it down in the comments section below right now and I'm going to give you guys the answer to that question at the end of the video. So what is the difference between accuracy and precision? Now moving on. Moving on, we are here right now in the MiG-21 BIS and we're going to use the first, the very first Soviet attempt at a, at a uh, standoffish guided uh, air-to-ground weapon and this is the uh, KH-66 Grom so the Kha-66 uh, air-to-ground, air-to-surface, radar guided, beam riding missile now as I said <laughs> this thing is it's a pretty strange kind of a missile it is uh, it is radar guided, so you have to put the radar in the MiG into a fixed beam mode and then basically the missiles just fire to where you point your radar on the ground. So you guys can see that I'm trying to get the pepper over the bunker, there we go, we have a lock and rifle 2K-66 Grom missiles. Now I haven't locked the bunker per se, I've just locked the point on the ground, the radar can't dif differentiate between the ground 
or an object so it just goes where you point it now the successor to the KH-66 was the KH-23 so the KH-66 as I said was a or is a beam writing radar guided air to surface uh, weapon the KH-23 was a radio command um, type of a missile it had a smaller warhead than the KH-66 but it could be manually guided uh, within the cockpit so the pilot could manipulate a little joystick and move the missile so pretty much guiding it uh, similar to what the US had in terms of their bullpups so the um, the bullpup missiles now both of these two weapons the KH-66 which uh, we have in DCS world but the KH-23 which we don't have in DCS world are 1960s weaponry so these are both 1960s weaponry they're relatively standoffish uh, the KH-66 has a, uh, a launch range of 10 kilometers, supposedly, so around six and a half, seven miles. But realistically, you're going to be launching it at anywhere between four to five kilometers because obviously because of, you know, sighting and all that. So just to put things into perspective, uh, during this video, we're going to look at this uh, from a multitude of different directions. So a reason for which a country chooses to build a certain weapon or not is multi-dimensional and that's what we're going to do so we're going to look at things tactically politically philosophically and of course technically you got to have the technical know-how to build these really high-tech weapons I mean uh, these aren't uh, cheap as well there's an ec economic aspect to this as well but it will tie back into the philosophy and the politics of the time in that country so welcome to the su 25 t so as you guys can see we have a lot of missiles on board and we have one bomb so this is the su 25 t and this is so i'm gonna put this out right now so take whatever you see here with a grain of salt because this isn't a high fidelity module within the cs world so some of the stuff that you see here the weaponry and stuff like that uh, they may not perform as they do in real life. So the first uh, missile that we're going to fire is a TV guided KH-29T. The KH-29T, just like the KH-66 and the KH-23, were both built and designed by the Zvezda Design Bureau. And there we go, we have fired one KH-29T, as you guys can see it flying away. Now, as I said, this is TV guided and it's a fire and forget type of a weapon. So meaning that you, it basically, when you lock a point with the TV, it doesn't need a laser uh, pointer, just with the TV. So it pretty much acts like a, uh, an AGM-65 Maverick missile fired in forced curly type of a mode so it pretty it just pretty much attacks a point on the ground so it's in that way it's a fire and forget and now we're going to drop a 1,000 uh, pound bomb there we go pickle that uh, onto this road outpost now this is also a TV guided bomb so this is a bit strange it's a bomb but it's uh, TV guided so it's similar to the walleye bombs and there we go impact so we've hit the bunker we've hit the outpost sort of um yeah so these two are fire and forget these two are absolutely fire and forget so you can you can drop uh, multiples of these in one pass on a target and they are relatively standoffish the the bomb isn't really you have to be pretty much over the target to drop it but the kh 29 is and it's it's designed to take out bunkers it is designed to take out key points of interest or a ship for that matter the cage 29 supposedly has a launch range of up to 30 kilometers but that's not what i'm seeing here in dcs world but that's why i said take this with a grain of salt um yeah so you you guys are probably starting to see a pattern emerge here most of the russian air to ground guided weapons are designed to have a pretty large payload and go after static static so stationary targets really large stationary high value target and not really go after small moving targets so both the kh-29t and that uh, i think it's a k br 500 uh, tv guided bomb are designed to attack stationary targets 
Okay, so the next missile that we're going to uh, showcase is the KH-25ML. The M stands for modernized and the L meaning that this thing is laser guided. Now this in my opinion is the best uh, Russian air to ground missile in DCS world. It has a range of 20 kilometers and if you fired from the SU-25T you can track moving targets as we're going to show you right now. So I can go ahead and track this APC but the downside is you're going to have to continuously paint the moving target if you want the missile to hit. Now the problem with this is as you are flying forward at 620 kilometers an hour, there we go, rifle, uh, you get closer and closer to the uh, area where the target is and targets aren't just undefended, unguarded. Uh, they're going to have AA and boom, there we go, we just hit that target. Uh, they're going to have some sort of uh, anti-air defense system and once you're over the target, the chances of you getting shot down is pretty high pretty high and as you guys can see we're over the target and if there was any sort of AA would probably be uh, probably be shot down so this is no AGM 65 Maverick this thing isn't fire and forget and it doesn't have that much of a standoff range unless of course you fire a single missile at a single target that's not moving so coming back to the original question which is why didn't the Soviets develop similar high precision standoff uh, air to ground guided weapons like the US or more importantly why did the US feel the need to make such weapons and the answer to that is very simple US defense planners and NATO defense planners were terrified of the large numbers of um, Soviet tanks that could flood Western Europe and they needed to design weapons they needed to um, have weapons that would uh, pretty much balance this um, this problem that they had against the Soviets. So uh, NATO forces, US forces have a superiority in the air and Russian forces or Soviet forces have superiority on the ground. So the, the USSR had no such problem. Now here we're going to fire the S25L. So this is the laser guided version of the normal 320 millimeter S25 rocket. Now mid-flight you can go ahead and switch the targets as I'm doing right there and next we're going to fire the Vickr missiles <laughs> and there you go you can see we can hit two targets in quick succession and boom there we go but again we are over the target we are over the target now the S25L, as I said, is a 320 millimeter laser guided, pretty short range, three kilometer range uh, laser guided uh, rocket pretty much. Uh, but the, um, the Vickr missiles, as you guys can see there, uh, they're pretty potent. Now, uh, they are also fitted to the KA-50 uh, helicopter in DCS world. Now the missile has, uh, it's, it's called something weird like the 94 um 172 something like that missile but it, it's it's a laser guided missile it, it has a range of 10 kilometers and it's it's pretty fast it travels i think it's supersonic it travels supersonic and uh, it's it's very very good against uh tanks and such uh, uh vehicles on the ground but against armored like more heavily armed or you know uh, larger targets it's pretty much useless so yeah the U.S. Uh, wanted to balance that Soviet quantitative superiority in terms of tanks with these high-precision weapons that can target uh, small a small thing like a tank on the ground from a relative safe distance. Now, why from a relative safe distance? Why the standoff? Uh, the USSR had a lot of air defense systems lots and lots of air defense systems and why is that that's because the USSR knew that NATO countries and the US would have air superiority in the air uh, NATO and US aircraft always outnumbered Soviet aircraft so even now the US has a lot more aircraft than the the Russians do so the USSR wanted to build um, AA vehicles, anti-aircraft systems uh, on the ground to kind of um, protect uh, 
their airspace but nato or the us didn't feel the need to do that because they knew they know that their aircraft is sufficient to provide air cover and so each country develops weapon systems based on their own needs now here we're watching a vicar missile impact the tank there we go i think it's an m60 and then there's a bunker right here so i'm going to go ahead and lock up this bunker with this vicar missile as well but it won't do much against that there we go rifle and there's a 12 second cooldown before you can fire the next missile yeah not much against that uh, bunker so yeah guys um tactically uh if you're making a weapon it has to have a purpose tactically you could, there has to be a requirement for a certain specific type of mission for a weapon to be made and then there is the technical matter so it was no secret that the USSR, the Soviet Union, was lagging behind the West, and specifically the US, in electronics and microelectronics. And these smart weapons require lots and lots of computers and miniaturized electronics. And uh, the USSR was just not up to uh, the task, technically, to produce these smart weapons. So that's one factor, very, very important factor, in uh, the USSR not having um, precision guided standoffish uh, weapons. Now another aspect of this is philosophical and economical and that is these missiles, these smart weapons cost a lot of money. Now the Soviets preferred quantity over quality. You guys have heard me say that before and I'm going to say it again. The USSR believed in creating large numbers of okay <laughs> weapons that would eventually be destroyed in battle but could easily be replaced they didn't believe in creating wonder weapons they didn't believe in creating the best weapons they believed in creating lots and lots of weapons that can get the job done but if are destroyed can easily be be replaced now is that a good thing or a bad thing well it depends on what type of war you're fighting if you're fighting a limited war having a super high-tech expensive um, uh, military will probably give you an edge very very quickly and you will win the war uh, very very quickly and that'll be it but if you are fighting against an opponent of similar economic and industrial power and it becomes a, sl uh, a slug fest and it becomes a protracted war then having really expensive weapons is not a good thing so that being said there is another aspect to this whole matter and that is uh, the social political uh, constructs of a country so in the u.s the u.s is a constitutional republic it is a liberal democracy and as such the government is accountable to its citizens and the public. And if a war is seemed too indiscriminate, resulting in large numbers of civilian casualties and death and destruction, the public opinion will turn against that war and against that leading government. So what about the Soviet citizens and the Soviet public? Did they not care about civilian deaths and destruction and loss of life and the way that their government waged war? Well, of course they did. But they had no method of control over the Soviet government. The Soviet system was a totalitarian system. Any slight criticism of the government's actions would result in immediate prosecution and most likely a person would end up in a Siberian labor camp. So the Soviet government didn't need to worry about public perception uh, that much. Okay guys, so we've come to the end of the video. Now before I close the video, Let's go ahead and answer those questions at the beginning. So the difference between accuracy and precision. Now these two terms are often inter interchangeably used and they're confused a little bit. So accuracy is how close you get to a particular uh, point or a particular value. Precision is the repeatability of several attempts and how close those results are together. So in DCS terms, Accuracy, so accuracy of a bomb hitting a tank is how close does it hit to the intended target, which is a tank. But precision is several bombing attempts of the same targets and how close the bombs fall within the same group over and over again. So that's the difference between precision 
and accuracy. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope it was entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, please take care of yourself and bye-bye.